Jealous Gwester, Bex be away from a wild in. She wabbled with you. Stell, Jim, Lily. Slack, yeah, a tom. It could just spell to the meal. Scalinitsa, Bermus, White Lily, Mood. Took a took a and Joe and Kathy and Robert jammed and being and uh on a government Canadian government card is uh and a name they got from a Bible or something is Mike Arnus. Yeah. They called it there uh, on the Canadian map. This place is called Adams Lake. It used to be Adams Lake. You know, my old great 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 grandfather's name. And I, I live here now alone in this house. And uh, when he gets interviewed and. I do my best for for the people that don't understand uh, our way of life, and we had a hard time learning it ourselves because it was almost destroyed by by the churches and by the Canadian government, misinterpreted by archaeologists and. And throws. So here I am, I'm gonna try and help in education. And be speaking seminar scene so the ones that are doing research can understand that they can help translate it into their own language the best they can. Because I'm not gonna try and make it hard and make it so people can understand. We all understand each other. Well, indigenous and Indians and First Nations are all new words and stuff like that. For me, I'm a Shikwapam and belong to the Nation, Shikwapam is Ali, Shikwapam Uluka. And, uh, It's more or less the lack of education, you know, that people need to know about our, our, that's our, our culture, and that's what caused a lot of problems in the past, is not knowing what we knew and of our people living here for thousands of years and you know who, who should know the land better than and, and uh, animals and the spirits of this land mm -hmm. but our own you know and uh, the spiritual part will be hard to explain because it's it's Exactly what it is, spirit, about spirit, spiritual stuff, and you need to practice a certain way of life to to get to hear them and to see them, and to 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 live on our mother, the earth, you know, because a lot of times it's explained about life but is it really is it a spirit you know like from the from the feathered ones to four-legged to the ones in the water the ones on, on the ground in the ground that's what gives us life and so when well the more we learn about that it would take the mysteries away how these things 
are passed on into our bodies and we call life because mm -hmm. it feeds our mind it feeds our spirit you know, feeds our bodies so it kind of if you if, if you're trained in this way and one of the ways is going into the mountains and ta trying to uh, get in direct communication with the spirits by fasting and praying and making offerings to them of tobacco and, and other th other other things. And it's not it's not a simple thing any anymore because it's been condemned by different religions that came across the ocean that it was devil worship and it was evil. So now we're trying to recover that safe place where we did live with. Because with it we learn like who needs who, you know feathered ones. They don't think they need us. Four-legged, they don't need us. Ones in the water don't need us. Medicines and plants and foods really don't need us. It's actually the other way around. We're the ones that need them. Because without them, we won't last too long. Mm -hmm. But with or without us, they will flourish and become a paradise again. Mm -hmm. now, that's the kind of thing of thinking about our, our mother, which we call our mother, the earth, that, that nourishes us and gives us all these to, to continue our future generation. I mentioned once that this person wrote a book and he, I forgot what he called the summit rules or when he got rights to a book. He said he had a copyright on it and it was all the knowledge from our people. And there was somebody up Canham Lake that wanted to use some of that. And that guy said, no, I can't because he had a copyright. So they argued. And his lucky uncle, Bill, was still alive yet. And I went to him and I had a tea and a coffee and he finally he knew I was there for something. And I told him, told him about these two people and he just said I don't own the knowledge as an elder or adult anymore he said that knowledge belongs to the children and the future generation you know, that's what he told me so so that's what I, what I believe mm -hmm. you know because if we don't we stray away from that. You know, we can't even drink the water in the rivers anymore, you know. The springs are drying up in the mountains. And uh, things like that, but that's because we've strayed away from being the, being the caretakers of our mother, the earth, you know, and that's where a lot of our ceremonies and our songs are around, is, is our mother, the earth. That, has taken on that responsibility from the Creator to 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 do that for us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we we have ceremonies about her and songs and and try to remember her every every day. But when we have something to eat, a drink of water, or breath of air, or greet the sun, it's all. In the stories of how we, how we, how we did things, mm -hmm. not a religion or anything like that. It's just the way it's been done. Mm -hmm. you know, well, my house, man, well, my house. Yeah. You know, it's the way it has been, mm -hmm. and uh, so I I try to keep on carrying on some of those things, but 
but with the invasion of about 500, last 500 years, they tried to attack that knowledge and, because they wanted the gold and they wanted the trees and they wanted the, the land. Mm -hmm. So they attacked that way of life that we had that protected our home. I say our home to the, to the Mother Earth because that's the only home we have. Mm -hmm. Everything that she provides needs the protection because they're being attacked now too, or they have been. You know, they're attacking other places in the world now. You know, where there's oil and, mm -hmm. and other other places. You know, calling them terrorists. Here they called us savages when they wanted our gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the history is coming, and uh, indigenous people, not only here, but I think around the world, think that way, that, you know, that there's, they're a minority but getting attacked by the ones that want all the resources, you know, yeah. make all the donations towards education and stuff like that. They, And managed to get control of them. Yeah. So it's a. It's been a struggle for our people, like all across the whole. Like the. Like the burning of all the corn, the beans, and the squashes from the. The Iroquois and Abenakis and all the eastern coast, and then they came west and went in prairies and killed all the buffaloes. And then, then here, you know, the salmon are disappearing, and those are all our livelihood. And it kind of like was a plan, you know, to scorch the earth where. Where we, where our livelihood was, because we resisted so much. Yeah. You know, people would deny that, but you know, we're we're the ones at the other end that know all about this. You know. And, uh, I think all through education, which they disallowed, like they never meant to educate us in a Western schools, like residential schools. They were really meant to educate us, and put us to work in fields, and, and uh, keep us in grade one, two, and three for a long time. And it took the struggles of our people to make that better, you know, than George Manuel and a few others, some of our relatives, you know, to, to struggle. Uh, to include us in trying to make these things better, not only for us, but for everyone, because everyone drinks the water, breathes the air, you know, makes homes of the trees. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I seen a poster one time, so, what are you gonna do if you cut the last tree down and caught the last fish, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you, know you know, it's kind of, a, put something in the mind of people, you know, that's that's what's happening. You know, all the pollution, all through uh, our people, through the the lake, uh, the Shushwap Lakes and the Adams Lake. You can't drink the water di directly out of the lakes and the rivers anymore, you know, what more evidence they need that something terribly wrong. And our knowledge and the knowledge that we have are to save those things. Mm -hmm. You know, why did they want to not hear us? 
you know, that's a question. That, you know, because if they don't hear hear their stories about Mother Earth, they may be forced to, you know. Yeah. By nature itself. You know, like the volcanoes and tsunamis and the big, huge fires. Some of the old people say, let them, leave them alone. He said, when, when the volcanoes and the, and the earthquakes and that stop, that's when you should really start worrying because that's what, how the earth helps itself, you know, with these. That's how air, the oxygen and the, the other gases are made are through these things, you know. Mm -hmm. you know I, I, if, you, if you stop those things, we'll probably end up looking like Mars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no volcanoes or nothing. So it's, it's kind of a common sense thing, you know, it's not real. I don't put really, uh, Latin words or Greek words to explain those things. Our way of life was, when we all spoke our own language, was one-on-one, -on -one, you know, or mm -hmm. we spoke directly to the children. Yeah. It was a way of life that uh, when we named the mountain, you know, we expected to go up there to see what that mountain, or we named the lake, we expect them to go up there and visit that, visit that lake, or, or you named the moose, or you expected them to know it directly what a moose was, or a deer, or, or a trout, or, or salmon, or mm -hmm. medicine, you know. And that, because in the Shukwapa's gene, a lot of those things are a way of life. It's, you know, it's. That's how we're supposed to live. Yeah. You know, it's not something that we uh, store in a cabinet or something like that. This mm -hmm. is where you're supposed to get stored here and here. Mm -hmm. And then the spirit, you know, those three things. Because those are the things that keep your body alive. It's the spirit, the mind, and the heart. And they all need food. And uh, this knowledge shows you where to get the food to, f to feed those things, whether it's in the mind and the heart and the spirit, you know, mm -hmm. from, from the Mother to Earth, you know, to, to uh, take it back to the creation stories. You know. you know. Like some of our stories go back how could anybody imagine nowadays in this modern world if you tell them there was nothing at one time? Yeah. They can't, they can't even hardly imagine that, you know, because we're living on an earth that's physical now and the sun and stars, other humans, animals. But our stories go back to that one. We called him the old one, he was, by himself, you know, yeah. and that's and uh, one uh, one story I heard was when he started creating things, he he had a helper and he was a coyote. And, uh, he started creating. He did it with a song. Under the earth one time was just a, a hot rock, not a round one. It was like, like those meteors you see up now. They got pictures of it all like that before they had water on it. Mm -hmm. It was just a hot rock. Or, the creator put water on it and things start to happen. Things start to grow and things start to adjusting itself, including us. We weren't the first. Mm -hmm. yeah, the plants, the plants and 
birds and four-legged fish. Then us. That's why when we say prayers, we call them grandmothers and grandfathers. Because yeah. they're the ones that taught them how to treat them. Because if we didn't know how, we wouldn't have survived. The struggles they went through, through the hang on to it, you know, yeah. wasn't easy. Many, many uh, ones I really honor in the last 500 years were the ones that died, died trying mm -hmm. to keep on to this knowledge, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are my heroes. In my lifetime, like the, the ones that are hanging on now are very few. Mm -hmm. And uh, by, 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 uh, People that want the resources and want to continue to to pollute in a huge way can get a permit from somewhere. Yeah. More than the ones that are trying to protect the, the earth, you know. Yeah. And protect the future generations. And that I want my grandchildren to to. Uh, Great grandchildren, great great great, everybody's to hang on to some some of them things. Yeah. The knowledge that's been passed on about our mother, the earth, and our our ancestor spirits, and, and uh, especially the ones that gave their lives for us. Because mm -hmm. if they didn't. I don't think we would be here if they didn't, you know. They, would, they didn't jump in a pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. It's, it's a, a big, big question because, you know, I have a great relative that passed away, and that's what he was worried about. What his, what his own children. He, said, he was worried about, did I teach them enough? Mm -hmm. Did I do enough for them? You know, now he's gone. You know, and I wonder about it too, because some of the things, the one that I went through, I'm still, still rebuilding my own life among my own children. You know, but the battle I have for Mother Earth that goes on, and, but there's a lot of other things that I haven't finished yet with uh, with the, my own immediate family to make it and make make it one again. You know, one yeah. mind, one heart, one spirit, because it's a real. There's all kinds of thinking on just on our reserve alone, you know. It's, there's Presbyterians, there's Catholics, there's intellects, there's spiritual, there's different different uh, groups of people that have one mind, one heart, and spirit, you know. Mm -hmm. And it causes them to not to be united uh, on for the water, you know, because part of the summer politics gets involved and, and the, the trees and the very things we live on, you know, mm -hmm. that I see becoming extinct, like up here on the plateau where they clear cut all the, all the, spring, the spring water, I said, oh, are drying up. The place on a plateau up here, it was, used to be about 300 deer used to come down the creek in the yeah. mm -hmm. and, and in winter down here in the valley, down towards Squalax. Yeah. But now there's probably about 50 or 40 deer yeah. that come down, might be even less. So those are the Things I've in that creek down here, that Dikhuhuaya Creek that runs into the 
river. Mm -hmm. yeah. From the clear cutting up in the plateau. Is a snow builds up seven or eight or nine feet, and then when the sun comes out and starts getting warm, it all melts at once. And then that creek fills up, and the Hawaii Creek fills up and floods, and the trout that used to spawn there and the salmon. You can't spawn now in a, in a pile of rocks in that creek because when it floods, all the sand and the gravel gets washed away and just leaves a pile of rocks. Yeah. You know, those things, that's just one area. There's hundreds of them up on there on this lake. Maybe that's why I'm the last one living here. <laughs> <laughs> and people write stories about people who are the last one, you know? And yeah. And here, here I'm one, you know? This used to be a big village where chiefs were born. Oh. You know, medicine people. Mm -hmm. Makes me pretty sad sometimes, you know? And I think about like what my relative said. You know, everybody's gone from here. They moved them down to the little shoe shop to chase. Skalkane. Because they said it was convenient. Mm -hmm. Not for us, but for the government yeah. to cluster us and take us off the land. Well, one one thing, because I live here, and this where is one of the largest salmon spawning grounds in the world. I went on a, mm, they call a salmon caravan to try and save the salmon and spread knowledge of uh, of the salmon, you know, how, mm -hmm. how it, how we lived with them for centuries. And uh, actually, just the, the story about the salmon alone is almost a whole way of life. Mm -hmm. Like even before you go, like if, when it's time for them to, to uh, come back up here and spawn. It's time for us to, f to catch them and fish. And uh, before you do that, you gotta prepare yourself. It's not only about the salmon, it's about a way of life that they, they teach us. You prepare yourself spiritually, the mind and the heart before to purify yourself before you go and catch them, you know, because they are something pure, and they've been feeding all of our body for for centuries and centuries. So we purify ourselves and have a huge ceremony to prepare ourselves, make ourselves pure before we catch them. I'm making it short. So, and then when we do catch the first one, we hold them up and, and be very, very thankful to the Creator for, for doing that for us. And we, and we actually communicate with that salmon while we're holding them and thanking him or her for, for doing that. And then before before she loses her life, we put her back and in, into the water and uh, explain that you go tell your relatives that 
we are still trying to do what we have been instructed a long, long time ago, so that we can live together in, a, in their cycle, help our cycle, and then we, by doing our private part, we help the cycle. So even when we we catch that salmon, teaches us a great deal of things again. It teaches us to be thankful. Mm -hmm. It teaches us about sharing. It teaches us about bringing the family together and doing things together when you you start cutting it up to 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 eat and and to share and and to, and to pray and to have you have your good mind. So we say and we and it's not only us. It's the bears. It's the trees in the bush that that the salmon share their themselves with for fertilizer and for food for the bears and the eagles and whole other number of things. And uh, the thankful thankfulness. So that part teaches us spiritually teaches us physically how we share in our families and how to work together and you know and, uh, and know the knowledge of, of its travels up, up the rivers know the knowledge of you know how how does there's thousands of creeks and rivers that that pour into one river a big river down the way down to the ocean Mm -hmm. How does that salmon know how to come up here? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's knowledge that you know, that may be a mystery until until you start doing the ceremonies and uh, and preparing ourselves to to deal with some things that because the Creator makes things that are pure. Now they're in, they're not as pure as, uh, as uh, they were at one time. There's pollution, you know, and there's, there's some some big giant companies that caught, catch those salmon by the thousands of tons, not, not just thousands of salmon, but thousands of tons. And they have no, they don't pray, you know, they don't offer anything anything for them, you know? Yeah. And and there are very few. And they get rich out of it. And the people that catch salmon still traditionally along the river get, get uh, accused of overfishing. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, silly, you know. It's, their culture is upside down. That the ones that say that, because we, because us that carry that carry on carry on fishing, we do the sharing. Yeah. But the ones that cause it catch thousands of tons, I don't think they do much sharing. You know, because, <laughs> you know, so their culture is kind of upside down. Yeah. You know. You know like our like at our culturally one time the chief was on the bottom and he held up everything up above you know the people and laws and stuff like that mm -hmm. but the summers are other way around their chiefs on top and everything is on the bottom then so it's totally almost opposite from our culture like People really need things in their culture. They have prices go up and they have to pay more. Yeah. In our culture, when people start to really need things, we try and help, you know, help each other. And uh, 
culturally anyway, I think some for people that have got caught up in the other. You know, that's why, and that's one of the reasons I keep trying to keep up what the elders have taught us, because living that way is a, with sharing and and uh, making offerings and praying to the Creator is a very beautiful life. It mm-hmm. makes, brings happiness, you know, gives, takes away the, the doubts and stuff like that where about where we're going to end up. You know. So it's, so it's uh, some of those things with me and few of us hang on to and because we don't do things because we hate somebody or hate something. We do things because we love our people. Mm-hmm. We love this Mother Earth. We love what it provides for us, you know. You know just to wake up and the sun shining and reaching up and saying, doesn't have to be a long prayer or anything like that. Recognize that we're in a creation that we've got to live with, you know. The human being is not the center of creation. Just a very small part of it. (laughs) Probably the weakest because we depend on every other thing, you know. The rest don't I don't depend on us much. It's us that depend on them. Mm-hmm. You know. And that's the way we gotta think now, I think, because some of the some of the places where things forty percent of the creatures are extinct now are, and it's not getting better. You know. So for people for people I may want to argue with me or or people like me. I'd sit down with them, you know, and talk talk about things. They probably know just as much, but a lot of them it's hard to do because they got jobs. And uh, that system got a way of burning you at the stake. They used to literally burn people at the stake one time, but now they they got another way. They either call you crazy or, you know, tree huggers or, you know, they know how to cut you off now. Yeah. Troublemaker. You know, they, you know they, some of us know they know their language, how they can how they have, how they can do that. But we're gonna, at least I am gonna stick to my guns and try and, try and do my best. And, you know, I went, I went through a lot of pain and sometimes thinking a few years ago that we're all alone trying to do this. But now more people are starting to uh, listen a bit to our to our elders you know because things are becoming more visible about the damage uh, to our mother the earth you know one of the one of the greatest one you can notice like even when you when you leave here and go down the river you know you you'll find that you can't drink out of it. And, yeah. You know, and then you go through a camops, you'll, it stinks down there. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's not hard to see what, what elders are saying. It's not far away, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's here. You know, there's cancer, there's diabetes, you know, there's people 
something wrong with how they think nowadays. There's all kind of sicknesses that are, you know, scientists, science uh, aren't really lying. They're not just telling the whole story, I think, you know. There's a lot of them. I think a lot is for jobs, you know, they could they end up stamping things for for people. You know. Because if if they were doing what they learned, but it would be a good place. That's a hard one because some of our people are getting swallowed up by jobs and mm -hmm. pipelines and mining and because that's the only livelihood they can to pay for their food and houses now and, and that's all they know, you know, through education like the school the school that I work in in Camus is it just built a whole bigger big building that are to train people for big machinery and, and uh, stuff like that. And so it's going to... There are some indigenization programs going on in, uh, in uh, universities now not only in our territory, but in New Zealand and uh, Australia and maybe the United States and Canada. I think that's where some of the knowledge need to incorporate, incorporate it, not just only as uh, intelligence, but to go out and look at these places that are been mined already, you know, it's just a pile of rocks. And, yeah. You know, you got to go out to, like in Pittsburgh, I went there one time and a big steel mill shut down now. And an old man smoking a cigarette there sitting there and I, and where did all the workers go? This place was hustling and bustling about 50, 60 years ago. He was sitting out on a stoop, his house, skinny dog walking by with his tail wagging. And nobody around, all the Europeans that came from to work in that big mill are gone. And he asked me where I was from. And I said, well, I'm out from out west in British Columbia. And he said, he just kind of chuckled, he said, that's probably where the people working in this mill went, <laughs> where the resources are. <laughs> yeah. So it's, they're right on the edge of the continent now, you know. Almost resources are getting less and less. So education's got to start turning about saving our planet, I think, you know. Yeah. We can talk about saving the eagles and saving the grizzly bears and saving salmon. But in, in the end, the one we're really saving is us. You know, us. You know, because without those others, uh, I think will last too long. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's really taking the real pictures of the ocean and the rivers. Like some of the greatest rivers on the, on the, on the earth are on this continent. And they're undrinkable right from start to finish, some of them. You know, what... Is there any words that need to be said about that, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know why there's hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people living along those rivers and they're not saying anything. Yeah. 
I can't hear them anyway, maybe fewer. But we gotta, everybody, you know, I think has gotta stand, make a stand sometime because the things I've been told by people that are passed away and they died when they were in their late 90s and hundreds, hundreds years old. And they told me stuff like, there's not much time. Not much time, the way things are, all the stuff is speeding up. And at one time, inventions took a long time, you know, from one invention to the other, but nowadays, this thing here, you're gonna have to buy a new one next year, and this one will stop working. <laughs> yeah. you know, and the same with aspirins, you know. Pain pills, they only work for seven or eight hours, you know, and they, they take the healing power out of it, so you keep on buying it. You know? And that's, that's the whole plan with, with uh, people that, I'm rich. Mm -hmm. I said, there's a way they, when they scrambled around a few years ago, they all the billionaires, trillionaires, or whatever you call them, that making everything, scrambling around trying to save themselves. There's one guy, I don't know what his name was. He looked down. Looked down, he looked at these things. He looked at these things, all these things, the cars and lights and all the things that, he said, those are the people that keep us rich, the ones that buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. So what he did, I think what he did was went, didn't hurt him to invest a few trillion, just to get the, engines going again. But for how long? Economists didn't know how they saved themselves. So some of the old people did. I don't know. You know, that, um, how long is that? How, is that, how long is that going to last? And I'm not a not really a doomsday speaker or anything like that, but I think everybody's got to take a look at it, you know. Mm -hmm. This mill over here, Adam's Lake Lumber, the non-natives that you work in there used to make fun of us. Oh, you Indians, get a job. God darn lazy, stay home, you're on welfare. One time that mill shut down, I don't know, three or four years. All the people that had their big toys, their boats and trailers and uh, quads, big four by four, their houses, they start selling them because they couldn't make any money for a while. We didn't say anything to them. We didn't say told you so. Or I thought they wouldn't know what was going on. The reason it shut down is that mill was made to saw big logs. Mm -hmm. They ran out of those big logs, so they they had to change that mill so it cut little ones mm -hmm. and make chips. Now there's. People working there that only work three days mm -hmm. a week, you know. I'm not a fortune teller or anything like that, but what does that say? You know? I worked. I worked in a place called Rock Creek. And the logs were as high as that doorway there. one or two logs on the logging truck. Now they're tiny, like a 
dear, dear, and stuff like that, like the fish down the creek, all disappear. People here, even this was a big community, one time, and I'm only one left, you know. Yeah. What does that say? I'm not trying to say poor me or anything. That's the way I'm saying it. That's the way it is. You know? mm -hmm. What's going to happen when I'm gone? Nobody. <laughs> I don't think. I hope. I hope to be people anyway. But they got all all leased out to non-natives now. One of the best best pieces of land right by the water, you know. Removed the Indians out of here and moved them down and chase them. Mm -hmm. and that's a plan for us, I guess. We're actually, we supposed to have disappeared uh, a few years ago. That was their plan. But uh, we survived. People don't want to, don't like to believe that, but look it up. One thing about the non-native, they document a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. All the plans the government's had for us, you know, taking the Indian out of the body or whatever it is. Yeah. All that stuff they had planned for us. Not working. <laughs> you know, in fact, they got to start doing something about their own. Because they're going down since 1969, when the famous words of the eagle has landed. Something, something is happening. And the reason our old people knew a lot of these prophecies, or whatever you want to call it, is a lot of the things that's happening today been done before. Mm -hmm. you know, it's been empire after empire. And a lot of them have collapsed. And, and I think this one is because they're doing exactly as Julius did. Yeah. As they're using the same laws, the same colonial laws. Well, you know Julius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those were colonial laws he had on this big empire. Yeah. You know, habeas corpus jurisdiction. They, yeah. You hear it in the courts yet. Sounds intelligent, I guess, when you use Roman or Greek words. To us, Sihuapam is more intelligent because it belongs to this land. Yeah. And that's what we got to share, start sharing with each other. My final, final thoughts is, I guess, one time uh, a couple of uncles and grannies, when we started speaking and publicly a little bit. And one uncle said, he didn't speak English, but he said, oh, you guys speak eloquently, say good words. And you know, you know a lot of things, all the pains and the things went through. And in the end, what are we going to do? I think I think we've talked enough about all the pains and the hurts and the therapies and whatnot. It's time to f to flip things over and start healing those things and joining together because all the stuff. that 
handkerchief. They're coming to our people, trying to, I don't know if they think they're trying to help us or what, you know, the reconciliation stuff. And yeah. Someday, when it come a time where it we'll, won't be able to rely on anybody anybody else except ourselves. Because who knows what we went through? Mm -hmm. Except us, you know. Not how not too many people in the world have gone through the things we have. And we're coming out of it. You know that uh, picture where there's a Native guy on a horse and he's hanging down. Yeah. Hanging in his, the vanishing native or whatever it's called. Yeah. I told one artist, we're healing strong now, folks. We're starting to learn some of our culture. The next artist that makes that, fa that painting is famous. It's the one that's going to be standing up and sitting up straight because we're healing and we're coming back strong, you know. Our knowledge is coming and, and we're going to realize that we're the only ones that we can depend on. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's near. Maybe it is here and we just can't see it yet because we, we've been too dependent on the kind of a, we've been disillusioned by a better way too long now. Yeah. You know, now we're coming out of that. And I look to you even, you know, I'd rather get help from you than somebody that'd give me a pill or. <laughs> <laughs>